This shelf can be adjusted anywhere from 36 inches at the top all the way up to 54 inches right here. So this is the original drawing that I did after uh, figuring out kind of what I wanted to do. And then I did this scale drawing shortly afterwards so that I could figure out my lumber bill. And we're going to jump right into it. It's modified a little bit from this drawing, just so you're aware. So out here, um, I had pre-made half of it the day beforehand. Uh, these are the 36-inch boards that I need to join the 4x4s together. I forgot to record cutting the 4x4s, but essentially you take a 10-foot 4x4 is what I ended up going with. Cutting it in half so you have two 5-foot uh, two sections per 10-foot board. And you lay them out. Go get the 36-inch uh, pieces I forgot. Come back in and uh, basically just making sure here that I uh, mark the middle. Uh, obviously the end pieces are easy to join up with the 4x4s, but the middle one, uh, I wanted to get it as center as possible without getting too scientific. So I was marking the middles. Ended up having to shuffle some stuff around and got some space. I'm using two and a half inch uh, deck screws for this and I was just tacking them together with two at first and then I ended up plugging uh, about four screws per 4x4 four four to 2x4 two union get the other side uh, some some of the you know it's like two by fours and four by four lumber. It's not always uh, the truest, so you kind of have to make it true. You'll kind of see that with the the top piece that I end up putting on. Uh, I got to kind of pull them into place. I did not glue any of these joints uh, just because gravity's in my favor on these particular joints, but there are some joints that are glued later. All right, so to to make sure that it was standing flat, stand it up to put the other board on the top. Uh, this is where the mark comes in handy because I lined up the middle of the 4x4 with that mark I made in the middle of the board, which allowed me to center it. And I'm just making sure it's nice and flush here. Slash, move it around. Once this is together, it's very secure, very strong. Definitely uh, the 4x4s, four the, the six total 4x4 four by, four by five foot boards were more than enough. Alright, so then you got to measure your crossways and your upways. Uh, I want to say mine was 36 by 63 total. Sounds about right with 60 inch boards and 2 by 4s on the top and bottom. Uh, get it nice and lined up. And then the nice part is, is this uh, half inch plywood I'm using, I can just stand right on top of to make sure it doesn't move while I secure it down. So again, get my corners. And then it's kind of just a game of filling in the gaps. So I didn't want to get too crazy here because there's going to be additional uh, screws. So I'm mainly worried about securing what I'm calling the bottom. It is important to make sure that you figure out which side is going to be your bottom and which side is going to be your front. Uh, and that will come into play a little bit later with the, the shelf supports that we're going to put on. Once this half inch plywood is down, it is like crazy down. 
like the structure itself is very sound. All right, so here I go. Um, the side that you see me marking right now, that is what I'm calling the front edge, or maybe that's the back edge. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only reason I say it's important uh, to figure out which side is your front and back of the shelf is because I put a one half inch drop from the front to the back. So my markings originally were going to be at 36 inches, 42 inches, 48 inches, and 54 along with 60. Uh, I ended up changing it last second, only doing them five feet tall. So uh, like this top piece I'm gluing and screwing in right here. Uh, this is at 54 inches at the front and 53 and a half inches on the back side. Uh, the reason I did that is so that if I <clears throat> store something on top of it, if I throw an atlas stone up there, uh, it will have a tendency to go towards the back rather than coming off the front. I have a beautiful one and a half year old daughter and I, it would just kill me if I had thrown something up there and for whatever reason she got underneath it. So this is just me being a little bit safer than I need to be. Again, these are those two and a half inch screws. For the actual plywood to attach it down, I only used one and a half inch screws. Uh, and I glued these down so that it would be plenty secure. So that one I just put there is 48 on the front and 47 and a half on the back. The third one is 42 and 41 and a half, and this last one I'm putting down is 36 and 35 and a half. All right, so I stand it up, push it back, making sure you get the back the right direction, because we're about to join these two halves together. Uh, and I, I push it all the way back here. I ended up pulling it out later because I realized I put myself in a corner. So I went out, uh, I ended up measuring. Uh, and I guess I measured one inch too large because I ended up with a 37 inch opening when I was only going for a 36. Uh, but that doesn't matter so much. I didn't even realize it until the very end. But yeah, make my sweet chalk line. Got my vertical piece. I was trying to save those four foot sections. So those four foot section cutoffs ended up being the middle sandwich layer between my two OSB boards. I wanted a inch and a half of uh, board, which is probably overkill for protecting my garage floor. But again, I didn't, I didn't want to ruin my home uh, just for the sake of training Atlas stones during the winter. So I take my board I cut, I bring it in, and this is where I kind of worked myself in a corner. Um, I ended up just securing the corners in with screws. You can see me there. Uh, I got all four corners, and then I kind of scoot the whole thing out so that I can actually work. So measure these pieces here. Uh, this is one of the things I would have changed. So you can see it's a 2 by 4 again for all three. Uh, I'd probably go with a 2x4 for the middle support here because this is going to support the rear shelf material, uh, like the holding material. So that 2x4 that's being screwed into the 4x4, I tried to overlap it so that the, the board on the inside that you'll see later can reach. Uh, so if I was to do this again, I would probably grab some like a length of 2x8, maybe a 10-foot length of 2x8 or two by six uh, so that it actually reaches because you'll see me put some other supports in in just a little while at the same time though it does need to screw into that four by four because it's just that half inch plywood sheet on the back side and it just needs a little bit of structure so that if you do uh, slam 
something into the back, it doesn't just come crashing through the back. Because on the back side of this for me is drywall. And again, I don't want to screw that up any more than I had to. This has to be screwed from the front. Uh, that's fun when you're doing it by yourself, but it is possible. So these were my support pieces. This is what gives the back wall the rigidity that I wanted it to have. doesn't have to be perfectly level and to be honest I'm eyeballing it for the most part but I did want it to be the top support piece I wanted to be taller or as tall as the shelf supports that are on the inside and I wanted the bottom piece to be shorter so that it covered the whole area and this ends up working very well this is different than the design I had and the design I had a crosshatch and that crosshatch design was kind of crap to be honest because uh, the weight would have been coming down on an X and it would have required some fancier cuts than I was really willing to put forth the effort into. Uh, this ended up working a lot better. Again, I would have used those 2x6s or 2x8s on the ends. That's the only thing I would have changed. These are those vertical supports, so I, I tried to go on the inside and mount the, the shelf brackets, and that's when I realized that I can mount the middle screw for the shelf brackets, but I was missing the outside screw. So this is me thinking really hard about what I'm doing, and then uh, finally just going through with it and screwing them in. Again, these were screwed. The top one is screwed from the outside, and then the bottom ones are screwed from the inside. So uh, I got sick of those brackets. I didn't want anything to do with them for a minute. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to cut my uh, stall matting. I got this at Tractor Supply. I think they're like 42 bucks. I'll have a price breakdown for everything at the very end. And uh, I cut these really nicely. And I was excited that I had a, a good, or what I thought was a good angle to show you guys, you know, my excellent cutting abilities. Uh, and then I'd put my fat head right in the way. Look at that fresh haircut. You'll see me move here though to cut the 90 degree and uh, you can kind of get a better idea for how I like to cut the stall matting. Uh, I've had to do this quite a few times and I'm getting a lot better at it. I've tried using T-squares and stuff but to be honest freehanding it just kind of works better for me. I just kind of do uh, shallow cuts and I just do a lot of them and I just make sure it tracks in the same path every time just be patient if it's your first time cutting stall mat just be patient it will cut just give it some time don't try to apply any sort of weird voodoo power tools to it because it won't work I ended up not putting any stall matting in the very back you can see the OSB exposed uh, that's just where stones get stored and to be honest uh, again with my daughter running around that little three-quarter inch lip there will keep the stones in the back part so that if she gets strong enough to try to pull one out, it's not that she won't get hit. All right, so uh, I cut the shelf support piece and I mounted the brackets. I forgot to record those because I forgot to record them. Uh, but then my wife, being the wonderful woman she is, was like, hey, I thought you were going to record all this and brought my camera out. I said, okay, well, I still got some work to do on the shelf, so I put a change on the shelf support system as well. Obviously, this three-quarter inch plywood I bought for the shelf by itself like might work for a little while, uh, but again, I, I'm throwing, you know, 300-pound Atlas stone up on this thing or dropping kegs or maybe someday I'll be really strong and drop a bigger Atlas stone on it. Uh, but I made my front bracket, and then I turn it around so I can use the shelf it uh, the shelf assembly itself to let me mount the rear back bracket it's a good thing I did because I forgot to account for that inch and a half and so when I put the shelf in it didn't go all the way in so I was able to not make that mistake on the other side so here's my test fit again these are glued I wanted this shelf to be very secure so I glued them and I threw I think four screws per board two and a half inch deck screws 
this is another area I think I would have changed. Kind of started thinking about it last night. I only put a center support piece in here. I think I would have been better off putting two support pieces uh, equally distributed inside. Uh, but I'll use it for a while and see if it needs any additional support later. Uh, also, accidentally what I've designed is a uh, shelf that if I turn upside down, I can gain about four inches of uh, table space. So if I wanted to, I could put the shelf in upside down uh, with a piece of plywood on the bottom and use it as a, what, 54 plus 4, so 58 inch stone platform if I felt so motivated to. We'll see. Still got to work on that part. So throw it back in, make sure it works. I cut. Uh, I took one of the cutoffs from the half-inch plywood to give the front of the shelf a lip. This is just to keep the stone again, just a, a little bit extra security so that if uh, it gets on there, it doesn't roll back off unless I want it to. And this is uh, pretty much all put together. I gave it a test. This is just a 190-pound stone. Looks great. I've watched that clip in slow motion a couple different times. And, I might add some support brackets on the front so that I can join the, the open end of the shelf together, but everything looks good. So here we see the final cost of everything. We got uh, most everything for this build came from Lowe's. Uh, prices are all right there. These are direct from my receipt. Uh, this does include two pieces of OSB uh, that were 4x8 sheets half inch uh, and those are the very bottom layer of the platform and the very top layer of the platform underneath the rubber stall mat in between there like we talked about earlier in the video is the cutoffs from making the walls and those actually filled in really nicely uh, I moved this platform out of the way and checked the floor after a few drops and everything was good to go so that's the build. That's where everything's located at. It was relatively easy to do. Just took a little bit of time. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe. And hopefully there will be more of these to come.